Oh, questions and comments. Remember, guys, yeah. this is question and comment. You opened your mouth. I didn't press the button. So we're live now. <laughs> and have they been seeing us talking? Have they been seeing us at least? Well, hey guys, we had a little bit of a problem there. <laughs> Yeah, our, our executive producer doesn't know how to Wait turn a on a button. Were you, was it just the audio? Or was I it pressed it, but then it went, I don't know what, I pressed the other button. Was it audio? I pressed the streaming button. What was what? on? So just tell everybody what just happened. Nothing was we on? We were blabbling for about 15 minutes. <laughs> no, did they see us at least? It's, it's well, maybe there's a delay and they caught most of that, but uh, we were blabbling for 15 minutes without it being live. What were we saying about <laughs> about him not not performing? He's not up to snuff back there. Well, you know what? I mean, obviously you you got to pay. You're paying, you know, peanuts for what you right, get. Right, right. You get you get what you pay for. <laughs> I always say that, but what do I know? Well, you guys missed a great segment. Jimmy was talking all about his the thumbnails that we've presented uh, in different videos. He's under the Eiffel Tower with the French settee. He's on the beach with the shell back. And, and oh, upcoming with the wing chair. Patrick's got all kinds of flying experiences for you, Jimmy. With yeah, the wings yeah. up in the up in the sky. You guys obviously you drink too much off, <laughs> off camera or something. I, I just say uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Well, you guys didn't hope miss. you guys like the thumbnail. Yeah, and Santa and Jimmy is Jimmy uh, the the subservient. I want the uh, complete outfit. If you're gonna do it, please. <laughs> I, I said that before. I'll say it again. Do you still get excited when you see the real Santa Claus, though, Jimmy? Do you jump well, up? Well, the down? list. All I can say is the list. I have a good list this year. You do. Yeah, good. I do. And I did. Five dollar scratch ticket, ten dollar scratch ticket. Well, uh, they scratch. better be all winners, and you know, of course, that the winning, you know, lottery numbers is always a kind of a good thing to, you know, then I can franchise the upholstery on Broadway. We can make millions and retire. To, where would you like to go? Aruba, Bermuda, Jamaica. Somewhere. You've already been there. I have been yeah. to Aruba, you, yeah. Oh, just recently on the beach with your chair. Yeah, you've been there. See, you, you're you virtually, guys, you, you can go. You guys are obviously <laughs> under some type of spell. Lessons or, 9 and 10 bad, went live today. Bad, did bad drugs. Did they? Yeah. You guys are just, I don't know. I mean, come on. Put well, a, there was talk well, at one point before. Yeah, talk. What was that, 10 seconds? <laughs> I, I think we should send Jimmy away. That, yeah. <laughs> Is that, is that burning toes back there? Uh, <laughs> no, what I was saying is that there was talk in the beginning of your little adventure here into upholstery to do extreme upholstery, you know, to bring you into the aquarium. Yeah, throw and, me into a, and, and and throw a you shark And throw you in a shark infested tank and, upholster, and let you upholster a slip seat around sharks. I think that would make a lot of views. But now that Patrick is an expert at Photoshopping, you could put him yeah, in there. I wouldn't go that far. Michaela was the one with the school for it. You could put them in the aquarium upholstery now. That's great, Jimmy. We'll do that. For you, we'll do that. <laughs> for me, you'll do that. So let's focus on the, uh, the wing chair. All right. Well, the wing chair. Talk about the wing chair, this wing chair, which is going to be the next online class. And, yes. Uh, we could jump to this first, I guess, Jimmy. Yeah, if you want. Because I think I, I talked, I, I stopped and looked at Jimmy and looked at the camera at least three times just on that one segment right there with the yeah. ply grip. Why well, don't you talk about it? Anyway? Well, this side this week, um, the other side was all hand stitching. This side is all ply grip. So from here all the way down yeah. is all the ply grip. And Kevin has been discussing techniques and methods to... Why don't you just to, carefully hold that, Jimmy, and yeah. show them what ply grip. Some people might not want ply grip is that's underneath the yeah, fabric and there. this is a very sharp product uh, again it does hold the fabric you do you staple it down or you can even tack it down for example but on the upper level here you'll see where the uh, the prongs are and that's where it it really holds the fabric and uh, uh, Kevin you wanted how many years of experience with this well you know I, I have a lot and and uh, it dawned on me as I was teaching it to you how much it's so mechanical, and I think I stopped and paused a couple of times, looked at the camera, and said, you, you paid for this class, which they, they are paid classes, mm -hmm. at Upholstery on Broadway. Right. You can get these paid classes. But I look at the camera, I stop, and says, this is the price of the class. In, in a couple of times I did that. Right. Because there's a lot, there's a technique to this, and for, for I don't know if Malcolm uh, is looking, uh, and, and Randy, yeah. but they'll tell you that there's little techniques, like, like cutting the edge of the ply grip where you stop, rounding the corner off right and then if you have a thin fabric putting tape in uh, over the yes, fiber the but not the prongs in order to you know take the curse off the right. metal 
And we, we have a lot of safety tips built into this, too, because it dawns on me you can easily cut yourself oh. very badly on your index finger or thumb when you're using this. Well, so I mean, anybody who's, had, who's doing the upholstery you may find, I found out <clears throat> a little bit because I did a wingback chair years ago, and I hand-stitched the whole thing, but I did not use this. Right. And taking it off, you still have to be very careful because yeah. it doesn't come off like you pull that's, on it and then all of a sudden it's, oh, really, okay, great, moving on to another part. Really important for people to know when you're taking that apart to be careful because yes. it's sharp. Once you undo it, once you fold it out, it has sharp edges. Oh, absolutely. So that's why yeah. you should always be using yeah. fair I mean, side if, cutters. If you're lucky enough, you can pull one side down, Right. you're, you're good. But in the case of where it tears... And you're trying to, you know, grab it with your hands. Don't ever do that because you got to know where you are at all times. I highly this. recommend the ply grip, not the curvies. The curvies is a very heavy metal. Yeah. That that's what that's really hard to take off. Once that's stapled down, mm -hmm. that's harder to take off than this stuff, which is softer. Okay. So the ply grip is the original uh, closing of outsides material, and I think it's the best. Mm -hmm. Now, now the other stuff is used for like heavy like like naga hide or or leather which we don't do anymore so this is i this is my exclusive do you have any you don't have any of that here no i don't i don't like it at all it's really hard to work it's really hard to work hmm. um but you really have to be experienced this is a great introduction to the to this if you're ever going to use the harder one the, the well i think it's um to me it's a little more accurate in a way because of the fact that you know, you are moving underneath, you are getting the, the fabric underneath the ply grip, and you're moving along, bending it in, mm -hmm. and then, of course, you know, trying to finish it off nice and smooth, and I think, honestly, I mean, nothing against my the hand stitching, I, I, I do need a little bit of work with that, but... Um, this ply grip is definitely the last. This is at least 50% faster. Yes. At least. At le oh, absolutely. Maybe even, depending on how good you are at hand Right. Stitching. I mean, I think, honestly, if I were doing another project, I think I'd want to, for the practice, and, and right. get back into it again. Right. Absolutely. And this is why we use it. I mean, you know, as professional upholsterers, we do need to speed ourselves up. Unless somebody's willing to pay us to hand stitch, like on museum pieces, for instance, we will, we will do that. But, um, you know, you really do need need to, at some point, speed yourself up, and this is one way of doing it. This is the best way of doing it, actually. So do you have any other more? Th um, we, we're splitting this lesson up in two classes. So people are getting class after class after class. Um, well, we're breaking it down a little bit more because right, of the right. fact the sides are a little bit, I'm going to say, unconventional. Yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of curves there. Your fabric, which we pointed out, has been causing you all kinds of problems with the hand stitching. Yes. Because it's thin and it doesn't it doesn't stretch. But with this, with the ply grip, we found that it's it's easier. It's an easier fabric. Yes. Yes. So but still, I mean, even with this this curve here from here to here, you cut, and I th I was going to ask you, and then you started doing it, but you cut into the fabric a few times to get that that that, that inside curve the outside curve doesn't need any cutting down no. and that kind of really kind of forms in itself but there was something else about thin fabric opposed to heavier fabric mm -hmm. and that was that you know, you could he was about three quarters jimmy cut that about three quarters of an inch further from the edge of the ply grip which on a thin fabric is okay a thick fa a thicker fabric it would start to double back on you, and you'd be a hard press to poke, poke, poke that in. Mm -hmm. So thicker fabric is harder to work because you have to get closer to the ply grip. A lot of people are nervous about that because well, that's done freehand, isn't it? Yes, I mean you. So there explain is, to people what the first step here was. They could see well, a remnant of it there. Well, we we did, you know, of course you staple it all to. Oh, well, you could staple it, but we pinned it. We pinned it. I mean the fabric. Right, but um, that's the first. What step. you have to do is when it's. What I used was the tool of the of the ages, and what we had, we, we basically came down on the inside all the way. The regulator, yeah. We used it all the way to smooth it in, pushed it in a little bit just to get a better idea, and then finally, when we got a certain area done, then we all kind of pushed it in. Why a don't bit you more. take your hammer, because you're. From from right about there, you could you could start hammering that all the way in. Look at that, you guys! How nice that that goes! Isn't that nice? A little tapping motion. Yeah, Jimmy's learned that you could take your hammer and adjust the pipe from the top like that. And I wouldn't go any further than that, Jimmy, because okay. we're not finished. But 
But look how nice that is. Yeah. I, I mean, mean that same area over the other side would have taken you a long time. And, oh, and, uh, yeah. Well, last week was not a good uh, I know, but... I was you know. afraid. But you know what? Again, uh, you and I did, had discussed it before. One side stripping, one side... Well, you were stitching, you so. were a good you're a good sport because you did struggle and Jimmy's got amazing patience. <laughs> you could tell that he's had kids. You be impatient with children, you know. Yeah. It's mm. cause Jimmy. Jimmy's a good sport that way. I, I have to be honest with you. If the roles were reversed, I'm not sure how patient I would be. I would be frustrated. He was. You were a little frustrated. Yes. But I I think I told you last week that that's going to help somebody. Learn better, I think, watching that. Cause well, their approach might be a little bit different. Their approach might be different. They might correct before they get to the point where you were making a mistake or whatever. Oh, yeah. But they might say, listen, I'm not so bad, Jimmy. Look at Jimmy messing up on <laughs> You know? Some people might want to stay with that. <laughs> but he's a good apprentice. And, and so the whole idea of the online classes, we get much more in-depth. I did want to mention one thing. And this is another thing that came up. The motion, Jimmy. Do you remember what the motion you were using to put that well, in? Well, I was starting from the top. Starting from the top and just one motion, right? Yeah. But just working here, this, with this working way. Working it this way all the way then down, down. And then keeping it, keeping it steady all right. the way in, making sure there wasn't too much fabric underneath the So it's plywood. not a two-way stretch. So that first, no. right. I think that, would, like you said, if going back and forth, left and right, it would have caused more creases. It would have caused yep. more, more bubbles. It is just a one motion. So there's a lot that, that happened just on that little spot when we're putting the... And, of course, you could see if you buy the class, you'll see Jimmy put this ply grip on. Um, it's kind of a hidden right now. It wasn't done intentionally. No, but, but, but well, I mean, it's, it's a great thing when people get an can, idea of what we're talking about. We can fold this. We can take this pin off. For people who are just tuning in, and they maybe not have seen us before, and just kind of... Roll that back. See that? And we have cotton in there. Jim, this is another thing. Jimmy says, well, where should the cotton be? The cotton shouldn't come around and in interfere or impede with the prongs, these little prongs. I'm not sure if the camera can pick this up for you guys in the room. Let's see if we can get this on here. See these little prongs in here? They're up. Right? So the cotton can't come over the prongs because then the prongs won't do their job. But when the, when the fabric just comes over and then you push this down, let go to the end and do it. <clears throat> and you pull, push that down and then hammer it. There's actually three, three steps to the pushing it in. Mm -hmm. One is the first step with your thumb, then another step to go down a little further, mm -hmm. and then the hammer. Right. So what the hammer does is it really seals the deal with the prongs. The prongs bend around the fabric, and then you're done. Isn't that interesting? It is. I mean, you know, when people start realizing it takes a little bit of work, it's just not slapping it up there, but... And it's not as easy. You need to learn the little tricks, which you'll learn if you if you if you look at the class. Now that said, we have a free YouTube class on Patrick about ply grip. Oh we, no way! Don't we have? Don't we show ply grip at one point? I yeah, think. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Now was that a recent one or is that? No, I think that's on? an older one. Yeah, I think ply grip one hundred and one. That was an all about ply grip. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But I, I guarantee you, if people watch me put the ply grip and talk about ply grip by myself, mm -hmm. and then they watch me teach it, mm -hmm. they're going to learn much more watching me teach it. Oh, yeah. And that's why it wasn't just about making a little extra money, although we like that. It keeps us going with the free stuff. Yes. But it was about teaching people. Well, it's always those little things, that yeah. technique, again, changing a chair over from caning to... That's a popular video. It is a popular. I was, yeah. I was, because there's not many people caning, and and that's a good solution to. You well, know. I think years ago, I think it was the '70s or an '80s thing. Caning was a. Always, they did actually have caning classes. I'm sure they still do. Yeah. But I think that's kind of gone it's, by the wayside. Rushes it. The rush seats. You know that straw. It looks like straw. Yeah. Heavy, heavy straw. That's gone. That's even more of a rare thing mm -hmm. than caning. But anyhow, let's get to the Facebook, which um, you administer, you help administer, and Jimmy pipes in there a few times. And I had a, I had a uh, one of our best DIY local DIY people come into the shop, Mary Kay, mm -hmm. and, and she's been a great supporter. Mary Kay did something I I would advise you guys to do if you're a beginner, is to buy this kit. She she swears by the kit that we have uh, for sale on the site. If not the kit. 
the electronic, they can download the electronic instructions for that. Um, they, or they can get both of them, the kit and the, and the instructions. But, but she did both. She, she bought the kit and she retied the springs and she's done. She's taken a class. Mm -hmm. She tied the springs. It really helped her in the class before mm -hmm. she got to me. And she, so she's taken our online classes, by the way. Remind me to talk a little bit more about that, Patrick, mm -hmm. in, in a little bit later. But they are, are doing really well. Uh, but Mary Kay, um, so she did a chair in class. We have a chair up right now. Similar to this one. Uh, but let's read it. And then she's doing another one. She came in. It was a very interesting inquiry that she had. She, uh, she had a chair that had a wire edge. And she wanted to know the, what, what the effect of the wire edge. It was a <laughs> This is funny, you guys. It was a wire edge seat mm -hmm. on a rocking chair. So I said, I said, you can get seasick on that, seriously, because because the wire edge, you thought I was joking about wire edge seat. Well, it was one, yeah. I mean, the wire uh, edge seat is, is, it's not a hot air. You get hot edge and wire edge. The wire edge, which I don't like, if people have watched me, I don't like it. I mean, in some cases, it's necessary, depending on the style of chair, but I like, an, I like a hot edge that you can cr uh, crown out mm -hmm. um, better. I mean, the wire edges came up because they say it's more comfortable, but I'm not even sure about that. But anyhow... Um, she wanted to change the, the wire edge to a, an upholstered crown seat. So I said, you could surely do that. And I, I advised her to use as much of the original material as possible, including <coughs> the springs that were in there. Just take the wire edge. We talked a little bit. So I haven't read this. I, I, I'll be interested in, in reading okay. see what, where she's at. So Mary Kay says, a new project, old rocking chair needing new fabric and more comfortable seat. Not enough cushion over the springs and a bar at the front. What she means by that is the wire edge. I paled away to find that was a, that this was a redo of a once leather seat. And there's the explanation for the wire edge. Okay. Because why uh, leather seats don't do too well on a crown. Okay. You can imagine. You can, it's hard to pull leather around a crown. Uh, it's easier to do a straight edge, and that's that's why it, it had the wire edge in it to to give a straight edge, um, which explains the uncomfortable metal frame. There was horse hair too. Next step is to peel back the burlap and pull that frame out and see what else I can keep. So she's showing, uh, she's got, uh, do you have all the pictures up there, Patrick? I have just the one of it uh, all together. You have the one, two, three, four, five. But she had four more beyond yeah, that, but. Definitely check that out on the forum if you go. Check, it. definitely go to the forum and check that out because this is an interesting, I'll see that, Jimmy, you can look at that if you want to oh, comment wow. on it. Yes, I remember seeing that. Wow, beautiful job. Yeah, she's really good. She had a she had a chair very similar to that that was really difficult to do because she had a, a big wood, a finished wood frame that she had to get around to get her tacks and staple work. I think we ended up tacking it actually, but we we did something very interesting, you guys. So uh, let me see that again, Jimmy. So when you look at this rocking chair, no, this this chair doesn't have the the wide. There was a wide finished part on the other chair about halfway on the side of the seat it was like this thick mm -hmm. and then she had a wood rail running along here mm -hmm. that she had to she had to take the fabric tuck it in this okay. is what you would have done if if you didn't have experience tuck it in tack it and then try to trim the fabric which is almost it always makes for sloppy work so what we did was we here's the wood frame i don't know if you guys i bet randy and you guys experience probably know what i'm talking about but what we did was we created a pleat in between here. Mm -hmm. And so we, we came this way. We came straight to that wood frame. And then we went off this way and this way and trimmed up this little pleat a little bit, turned it under, and stretched it this way and got a tack, tack on either either side. Wow. And then, and then we could go back. It was easier. We still needed to tack it. But it was much easier to do it on a folded piece of fabric or a pleat in this case than it would have been to just freehand you know just raw right you know and it made a huge difference on the on the finished product she was thrilled she was thrilled yeah i would say that if you're going to be doing any upholstered seat now that i'm thinking about it you don't want to use a lightweight fabric you want to use a heavier fabric that you can you can pull a little bit more and because sometimes it takes a little brute strength you know, so you don't want to be using a, a a very you know silky thin fabric or something. So that's good. Let's go to the next one on on <coughs> Facebook. We didn't think we'd have a, a lot of things to talk about, but we do because Jimmy hasn't even gotten to his YouTube comments. 
Yeah, which, one of them by me. Yeah, Jimmy's been commenting on himself, which is interesting. <laughs> well, I just try to bring a sense of humor to the world. That's good, Jimmy, you know. Yeah, Do you I, look in the mirror at night and go... No, first thing in the morning, I usually, I usually, <laughs> usually I, I, I don't keep the lights off and kind of go, okay, Jim. You look in the mirror and say, I like me. No. I'm going to go out. When I turn the light on, I go, I look in the mirror and go... Okay. <laughs> no, you go up like Fonzie, and you, you got your, you got your. Yeah, I go like this. Uh, 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 no, no. And then I go. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I have one more. Then, then it's your. One turn. more, and thirty-five minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's interesting. Both of these present uh, explanations, and this well, next I, one you does. Well, I spoke of it earlier. Yes. This one here is. We love your upholstery show, every question and answer. However, who is that? No, I'm just kidding. I knew it was coming. <laughs> it comes at least one per show. Malcolm, who is an upholsterer, right, Patrick? He's also in the chat right now. Hey, Malcolm, I see this semi-attached cushion. I hate semi-attached cushions. There's a two, picture of his chair. Two things I don't like, semi-attached cushions and wire-edge seats. One time I had a semi-attached... Anything else, anything else you want to go That's to? That's all. One day I had a semi-attached wire edge on. No, I'm just kidding. There's no such a thing, Jimmy. But this, uh, Malcolm is showing um, this semi-attached leather yes, uh, which cushion. Is. Which is, oh, man, I'm telling you. Um, he's asking, new job, anyone with experience for an attaching a pillow top? Anything I should know before starting? The ottoman and the backrest of the pillow top, the seat is standard. <coughs> yeah, um... I just talked about how I'm, he doesn't say if he's using leather here, does he, Patrick? Maybe you can, maybe, you know, Malcolm, well, maybe what's, what are you we, using what's leather. What's the difference between using if he would Because what we just talked about on leather <coughs> mm -hmm. is that, notice on this one here, notice on the chair how yes. everything's straight. Yes. There's no crowning or anything like that. Right. So leather, like I said, doesn't like to crown. But right. if he were using fabric, I would try to talk the customer into doing a pullover on the ottoman. If he's using fab uh, leather, he, he's not going to be able to do that. Mm. But it uh, is a nice chair overall. I mean, it's a beautiful chair. Yeah, I've seen beautiful, those, those beautiful. leather chairs are nice. So, with, with that said, looking at it, how do you? He's asking. I said the only thing that comes to mind about about this, you'll be able to figure this out if you reverse engineer, Malcolm, if you've never done it before. But what's interesting, once you're done sewing the whole thing, mm -hmm. you actually have to cut open it. You can use a zipper, but I don't. You actually have to, it's backwards. The whole, the whole cushion, this, the top of the cushion's inside. Mm -hmm. the, the fabric is backwards. Okay. And there's no way to get in it. He's saying that the client decided leather is too expensive, though they want the look. I'm trying to get them to go with mohair. Yeah, mohair is tough too. Mohair is very, very uh, tough to sew. I would, I would stay away from mohair, Malcolm, especially if they want. Did he say they wanted the same style? The same look. So no, you got to stay away from mohair. I'll tell you why. Mohair makes up really thick on the piping. It almost looks like rope. You're going to end up with something totally different. If they're looking for that sleek look that this has, with that, that remember that leather, that looks like a nice fine Italian leather. Which, by the way, we're having trouble with leathers. We're having a lot of trouble with leathers. Is the prices or? Well, I think the industry was decimated over there because of COVID. That's what I think. That's um, my Patrick, theory. Can you make a? Can you change a semi-attached to non-attached? Yeah, you can make it a pullover. That's what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting to make it a pullover. Try to convince them to go pullover rather than the semi-attached. Think about semi-attached cushions. No matter how good you are sewing, it never squares up perfectly. It it because because uh, he's you know you got these up right now, right, Patrick? Yeah. His, I I, I want to put it back up. Yeah. But. You see, he's pulling that away. The The seam is well in. You know, it's cut like four or five inches in. I actually in. don't have the picture. I'm going to get the picture of okay. him actually holding it up. That's a good one. I have the picture of the chair. But you continue on. I would I would strongly advise just a regular upholstery weight fabric for this chair. It, you're still going to have your lines. You know, for instance, on the mohair... Uh, you could tell that this is a fine leather. Look at the piping. It's 532nd, Jimmy, mm -hmm. piping. And that piping does not look any bigger than a fabric piping would look. No, it looks... So it's not... Thin. You're not talking shoe leather here. And let me tell you something, you guys. You could make a real mistake on leather. Uh, you've, you've really got to get the finest leather available. And like I said, I think I'm having trouble with leather, so we're not doing it anymore. But... Um, 
So the semi-attached cushion, once you're done sewing the whole thing, you're left with um, it, the, all the fabric is inside, the cushion's inside, and you're looking at the back side of the fabric on the bottom, and you actually have to cut an angle cut from not too close to the seam. You'll have a seam in there that's separating the cushion top from the, the, from the boxing um, or from the top of the seat, and you have to make a, an angled cut and then reach inside like you would a normal cushion and reverse the whole thing. Now, sometimes... I've had very difficult fabric, Malcolm, and what I've done is I've upholstered the bottom. If you're still insisting on the, if your customer still wants the semi-attached cushion, and what I've done very cleverly is on each corner, I've, I've taken a nylon twine, mm -hmm. right? I, okay. I, I go in and out about an inch at each corner, right? Okay. Recessed in a little bit where his seam is, where he's showing us, where he's peeling it back. I have, a, I have ends like this, and I take my button needle, and I go to the bottom, and I tie a really tight slip knot mm -hmm. on each corner. Okay. And then I go in between. Sometimes you have to go in between with a curved needle, like from one, one corner to the other, mm -hmm. and do some more tying. And I'll tell you something. What that does, it gives you a lot more control over the, over the uh, squaring up of the cushion. Because mm -hmm. once, you, once you sew it up, the, the variables are the fabric can stretch, the fabric can shrink, and your corners don't line up. But when you do it the way I just spoke of, you have more control over your over your corners. It's really important to get the corners to line up. And that that is just as good with the heavy nylon twine, not with anything else. Mm -hmm. Not with stitch hand stitching twine, even though it's nylon won't work. It has to be the nylon twine will work. I've done that. I've done that after I did a whole semi-attached cushion. I, I didn't like it, and then I go, I, I take it all apart, or I do it all over, start all over again, and I, and I do it that way. So I hope that was helpful, Malcolm. I'm sorry. Just thank you. Also, the materials would have been 2,500 in good quality leather. Yeah. Well, that's it for that, Jimmy. You look like you've uh, <coughs> vegged out over there. Falling asleep, yes. I could tell that what I was saying really was riveting and fascinating to you. And riveting. Then, riveting. Smell it for me. <laughs> so now, the now, segment that you've all been waiting for. Oh, stop it. The the, the one and only. Oh. From Parts Unknown. I should have music when you, when you get to my Remember segment. Remember how they used to, What? Music. music what what yeah, type of music uh, would it be? Know. Square Let's music? Square dance see, music? You don't do square dancing. Sure I do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, give them that song you always give. No, they know that. They're bored with that, Jimmy. Oh, okay. So we're going to try something else. Huh? <laughs> so anyway, let me get to my segment of the show, and this is how to make double piping. Thanks for sharing, but I would have liked to see the chair finished. Thanks again. That really helps. This is from Hungry for Truth. So I will, will add to that. So unfortunately, with the YouTube videos, we have very few A to Zs, and we're filming. Um, we're a custom shop. Mm -hmm. And we're a fast-paced shop, so a lot of times <coughs> we do show segments. We don't show the whole chair. So we apologize for that, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, when you're a superstar like yourself, you don't have to worry about things <laughs> like that. Uh, this is the new video coming soon. Check out this unusual ribbon chair. This is a comment for me. So what's the method of taking it apart? Now, this is on YouTube, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, very I slow. Did, I, did not, I saw the initial part of it. I had to walk away because it was working. Well, we, we, um, we started with the base, I believe, on that. And then we, we made sure that when we were peeling the fabric off that we were marking each piece and what it was and mm -hmm. the direction. It's very uh -huh. important. So but everything it's, was it's, a template. It's basically what it is is reverse engineering. Okay. Okay, so we're lucky that we have a pattern. But, the, you know... That's what it is, reverse engineering. Okay. This is from the, uh, the Postal Show last week uh, from Janine. Great show again, guys. I'd love to see I'd love to see deep button tufting, too. You know, it's, it's funny. This is one of the things that have kind of skipped by us, because I don't think we have one video we have done one pri pri on, well, on that deep tufting. We have... We have I thought you did something with a couch. Was we that did. That's okay. called, that's interesting because that's a soft tufting. So what that was, okay. uh, being a soft tufting, it was done, it's a modern 
piece okay. with uh, with the traditional treatment of tufting, okay. but with no deep tufting. And I think Janine probably she knows us enough to know that that. And we do mention that on that show. That's an A to Z, by the way, on okay. that. It shows tufting, but it's a very soft tufting, not deep tufting. We've not had a piece, I think, that we've shown. We've now, had them, but we haven't shown them on a YouTube. I've never done a, a piece with tufting at all in any way, shape, right. or form. So, Maybe that will be your next project. Well, yeah. I, your again, you know, we're always you. talking about, you know, what people may want to see. The yeah. idea that, if oh, I have a chair and it has this and it has that. Right. Oh, yeah, I, you know, are you doing, a, again, an ottoman, whatever it might be. Um, this is, again, the upholstery show from last week. Leslie, she says, yes to the deep button tufting also, please. Oh, wow. Two people yes. commented on the on our comments on the show. Yes. And Liz, Leslie also said, uh, I guess she was laughing about our approach to the world and what she thought of the, the show. She thought it was funny. Oh, which was which was my part. <laughs> so we've been we got a request of subtitles for you in uh, different subtitle. languages. Different languages. Yeah, and well, Patrick's going to be in charge of putting oh the content. Oh my God! You down, guys so. are just way. You uh, <laughs> you're going to lose people. You know that they'll be rebelling in the street. Why? You'll be like one. You'll be like a Rosetta Stone. Oh yeah, Rosetta Stone. <laughs> Actually, when I when I. Uh, Jimmy's fans are calling him, yes. which brings up a point. I, I, I do want to mention, uh, speaking of fans that time, when we were filming in another location. And, and the uh, dog. For, for people who haven't heard this story, this is worth repeating. Oh, my God. No, it's not. Well, well early in the day, before Jimmy got there, a, a big Doberman pincher. It looked like Marmaduke for all you, you cartoon buffs out there, cartoon character buffs. Marmaduke, right? Yes. And Marmaduke was out in front of my shop visiting the barber shop, and... and his tail was wagging so much, he was hitting the door, and it sounded like somebody was knocking on the door. Yeah. Like that. Like the police. Yeah. Somebody. And, and so, and so I, I noted that. And later in the day, when, when, Jimmy, I arrived. when Jimmy, Jimmy was doing a segment like this, that the same noise was out front. And we usually, over there, we would draw the curtains, remember? Yes, yeah, because people and, were looking And Jimmy at looked at me and he said, that's one of my fans. <laughs> And I said, it surely is one of your fans. And it was the dog. And I went over and, and I lift, I lifted the shade. <laughs> and there's the dog. <laughs> hey, you know what? It could be worse. It could be nothing out there. Yeah. Mm. Then we really have a problem. Oh, it could have been an elephant. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, the new video coming soon. Again, the uh, unusual ribbon chair. This is from Randy. He says he wants that chair. Isn't that a nice chair? I, it, it's so unusual, and that, again, that's, it, it I never saw unusual. it. There is a. An How hard was it taking apart? No, it wasn't hard. But there's there's a there's a thing about that chair that I can't really mention. But mm. it's an anatomically correct chair. Let's just say that as you're sitting down, it's genius. There's a genius uh, to this chair. Okay. And that is, uh, I can't really talk of it that much, but. <clears throat> People look at that ribbon chair, and you can see what I'm talking about, maybe, okay. and use your imagination. But in all seriousness, Jimmy, it actually makes, it's a genius design. And it's that's absolutely from, now where genius. where is that chair from? Uh, I think it's from uh, Sweden. Stock, do you remember? Stockholm? Do you remember? Where's Patrick? Patrick's left the building. Um Boy, we I can can't remember. Him. Well, uh, wait a minute. Me, Let's, no, 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 Jimmy, no, no, we got it right it. here, for God's sakes. I can look at it. Wait a minute. Hold on. You, you mm -hmm. keep talking. Well, the next comment, and we can go through this, uh, is from Randy also. This is the, uh, the ribbon chair again. Love the chair, almost like auto upholstery. Label absolutely everything before you start taking things apart. Nothing wrong with talking to yourself as you work through a project. Oh, my God, it looks like... All of that foam is starting to deteriorate. Made in the Netherlands. And we have a no. comment, do we? We have a question. We have a question, Jim, yes. for you, I think, maybe. So this is from Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Kathy's new, I think. Uh, or Kathy Ann. I don't know. Kathy that. Ann? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Kathy what Ann. about tying zigzag springs? My ties are losing tension. Well, if you've watched the YouTube, you know that I'm not a big fan of zigzag springs. However, a lot of mid-century furniture does have it. Mm -hmm. So remember, the only thing you need to worry about is zigzag springs. Zigzag springs are really tight front to back. Mm -hmm. And that's how they sit on the piece of furniture. The problem is, 
is the side to side motion. Oh. So the only thing she needs to do really, and I don't like, they used to use wire to connect them. Okay. I don't like that. I don't like wire on wire because it makes a noise. And anytime somebody sits down and they hear now a noise. A, yeah, now you have a it's noise. It's the worst. It's the worst. You, you've had experience with that, Michaela? Yes, when I was in college, the, the dorm beds, um, they oh. were the, they had the zigzag springs. Yeah. And it was, it was metal on metal, and I kept having to spray it with WD-40. Oh, jeez. And that got rid of the, the, the squeak, but it was just, I, you couldn't even, you couldn't even move, like, a, a single limb. And yeah, would, without hearing speak, yourself. Without hearing something. Well, the easiest solution to that would have been to take some ruby twine that we have, some some that ruby twine, and using that instead of the wire, and that would be just across the side to side. That's it. I would have said, let's get a hammock. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's me. Um, oh, the Netherlands is the answer to your question. Where well, is I've chair? never been. There you go. We could go. I, you could oh. set, You guys got to get that fun going. That travel fund. No, we're you know, trying. I could be, I could be the next, you know. So far, we only have enough money for you to go to Chelsea on a on a on the well, seventy nine right. bus. I, I'm sure I could work. <laughs> well, there's, a, there's a few different restaurants out there. I mean, you know. Oh, Chelsea's a big place, a big up and coming place. Yes. So the last comment is again the ribbon chair, and this is from Cali in the Valley. Wow, it's a beautiful design. Beautiful, and it is beautiful, isn't now, it? Now, how old, how old is that chair? Um, I, if I had to guess, uh, they're all from the 60s, all these chairs oh, okay. are from the 60s. Okay. So, Jimmy, yeah. I think I'm going to let you, unless there's other questions or comments in this segment of the question and answer, um, we aren't going to do Michaela's segment because we just don't have any estimates. Well, estimate something. Huh? Don't cry for me. <laughs> I was about to say, yes. Well, let's look at Jimmy. How much would Jimmy cost to be a pollster? I'm cheap and easy. That's and all I can I'd say. say about $125. I think he needs about four yards of fabric. I think he I think he could need some deep tufting around his shoulders. I think he need maybe oh a chair. Oh, my gym. God. You, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're the, you're the uh, you know. The I gave you a compliment. Pinnacle of, uh, oh, you, you're horrible. Unless there's other questions or comments. Um, I'm going to let Jimmy, Jimmy, you've got an open mic. Now, there's some no, responsibility not, know, oh, no. with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, all I'm going to say is thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope everyone has. This is our Christmas show, Kevin. Yeah, is that right? Next, after, next time will be after Christmas. <clears throat> wow. I mean, I don't know what I'll do with myself. The next Probably. one will be the New Year's show. Yeah, New Year's show. <laughs> I guess we're going to have to tune in Guy Lombardo and all those type of, oh, God <laughs> almighty. What am I talking about here? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so anyway, Merry everyone Christmas. have a good Christmas and uh, Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and all. Take care, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, Jimmy.